This video is sponsored by Surfshark. All right, so the sleek looking phone right here is the X70 Pro Plus, the latest flagship from Vivo. Nowadays, the smartphone game is so competitive. And something I always look for is what makes a device stand out? You've got phones from Samsung that literally flip and fold. The iPhone has the ecosystem and is legit a status symbol at this point. Hi everyone, Ta here. So, what makes this phone special? Well, the hype behind this phone has to be the cameras. This is the second year in a row that Vivo is working with Zeiss, who are very well known for their digital camera lenses. It's a big part of the marketing for the X70 lineup. Vivo's not shy about it either, with Zeiss branding stamped in three different places on the back of the device. They want you to know. I have a lot to say about the cameras, but let's take a look at the rest of the phone first. The specs are very impressive. This has some of the top hardware that you can find right now. So you already know the phone runs like a champ. Unlike last year, they've also added a lot of the missing high-end features like wireless charging plus reverse wireless charging, an IP68 water plus dust resistance rating, and thankfully, stereo speakers. Having those features makes the X70 Pro Plus very competitive with other high-end phones, which wasn't the case earlier this year. In the box, you get quite a few goodies. If you're an Apple or a Samsung fan, you know that's kind of rare nowadays. There's a 55 watt power brick, a charging cable, a pair of headphones, a USB-C dongle because there's no headphone jack, and even a thin but surprisingly decent looking case. In terms of design, it gives me that executive vibe, especially in this black color. The giant glass slab beside the cameras is an interesting choice. The finish on the back is super bold and I kind of like it. It's different. It's shimmery and almost sparkly. The screen is really nice. We're talking 120 Hertz AMOLED with a 1440p resolution. It's an LTPO display, meaning it should be able to refresh between 1 to 120 Hertz as needed. Out the box, it's set to adaptive and I've only seen it jump between 60 or 120 Hertz. Nothing in between or lower than 60. If better life is what you care about, you could always lock it to 60 Hertz. Consuming content on this display is a great experience. It's completely on trend with slim bezels, curved edges, and the hole punch. Stereo speakers aren't the best I've heard, but beats the single speaker from the previous model by a long shot. The phone is running Android 11 with Vivo's FunTouch OS skin on top. The software is relatively clean and reminds me a lot of the Pixel launcher. You've got round icons, the good old Google feed to the left, and a clean looking app drawer. I'm not really a fan of the notification shade design. The square buttons just look out of place to me. There's quite a few apps that are pre-installed too. Some of them you can uninstall, but there's a bunch that you can't get rid of. And because I can't create folders in the app drawer, there's no way to hide them. They're kind of just scattered all over the place. Don't love that. On a more positive note, I'm really digging some of the extra software tricks that Vivo has built in. For example, when the screen is off, you can hold the volume down button to turn the flashlight on and off. That's seriously helpful. If you want to quickly launch a split screen, just slide up with three fingers and then select your second app. Easy as that. Here, let me do that again. Tell me that's not quick. Similar to that, Sliding down with three fingers will quickly snap a screenshot of whatever is on your screen. This is probably my new favorite way to take screenshots. But yeah, dig through the settings and you'll find a bunch of other customizable features like these that are low key useful in everyday situations. All right, like I mentioned earlier, Vivo worked closely with Zeiss to co-engineer the photography experience on this phone. I'm just gonna say it, I think the partnership is paying off because this phone takes some of my favorite photos, period. There are so many times where I'll take a picture, not expecting much, then check out the photo afterwards and just be blown away by how good it came out. That happens a lot with this phone. With a total of four lenses, there's a lot of flexibility to frame your perfect shot. That includes a two times plus five times optical zoom. Pictures in general are bright and colorful with really good detail. When lighting is harsh, pictures can sometimes be a tiny bit overexposed for my taste. The HDR also goes wonky once in a while, leaving you with pictures that might look artistic but aren't all that realistic. 
Don't get me wrong though, the pictures in general are amazing. Under portrait mode, you'll find four Zeiss inspired styles built in, which are supposed to mimic the iconic Zeiss bokeh that their lenses produce. They look cool and you can adjust the strength of the blur, but I mean, it's still pretty obvious it's software. If you have kids or pets, you'll love the sports mode. It lets you snap blur-free photos while they're running wild around the house. Usually, the majority of the pictures I take of my dog end up full of motion blur or look muddy, but this completely solves that. Almost every single shot, no matter how fast he's moving, is usable. Very, very handy. Pictures from the front camera are very flattering. I see that because it tends to lighten up your skin and narrow down your face just a tiny bit. Seriously though, depending on where you're from, that could be ideal. Colors are also a little more muted than I like, but overall, the front-facing camera ain't bad. There's plenty of detail and I can see a lot of people being more than happy with their selfies. Low light shots are crazy good. It essentially has built-in night mode that kicks in automatically, so you technically don't even need to switch to the dedicated night mode. The amount of detail and light it pulls in, even in really dark situations, is really impressive. There's also a Zeiss coating on the lenses that I initially thought was all marketing, but you know what? It actually cuts down on reflections from light. When it comes to video, what's unique is that every single lens is optically stabilized, so you can expect stable footage across the board. That's something I'm sure everyone will appreciate because who likes jumpy footage, right? Like last year, video recording isn't nearly as impressive as the pictures. It's really hit or miss. With nice soft lighting, footage looks really good and I'm sure you would agree. With harsh sunlight though, it still tends to crush shadows and clip a good amount of details in the highlights. That's especially true with the ultra wide lens. I mean, just look at this. It's really inconsistent. Sometimes I love the footage, sometimes it ends up looking way below average. If you need a reliable phone for video, this might disappoint you. Selfie video maxes out at 1080p, which is probably fine for most, but let's be honest, 4K isn't all that uncommon nowadays. Here's a quick side-by-side -side with the iPhone 13 Pro. And while you check that out, let me talk to you about today's video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. So what Surfshark does is that it encrypts all your data before it goes over the internet, meaning people you don't want having access to your personal information won't have access to it especially relevant on sketchy public Wi-Fi. Being Canadian, one of my favorite use cases for our search track is to access content from other countries. With one click, I can binge watch my favorite episodes of Friends, which you can't find on Netflix Canada. What's great is that they don't limit the number of devices you can connect at a time, meaning your whole family is covered. So if that sounds good, check out the link below and use my promo code TAO. You'll get 83% off and three months completely free. The 4500 milliamp hour battery is a respectable size. It easily gets me through a day of typical smartphone usage. I've been averaging around six hours of screen on time. What's great is that it charges really, really fast too. So you can quickly top it off in the morning or before heading out for the night. The battery shouldn't be a problem. When I reviewed the X60 Pro Plus earlier this year, my biggest gripes were the single bottom firing speaker and lack of an IP rating. With the X70 Pro Plus, they've addressed both these issues, plus through in wireless charging and a bigger, higher resolution screen too. I mean, that's a nice list of upgrades that now makes this a legitimate flagship. The pictures are seriously impressive and is easily the biggest appeal of this phone. That Zeiss partnership seems to be working out very nicely for Vivo. I don't have exact global pricing for the phone, but direct conversion from pricing in China has this ringing up to around 850 to 950 US dollars. There's no official launch for North America yet, but if this is available in your country, I think it's worth a look. Anyways, let me know what you think about the X70 Pro Plus in the comments. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'm out of here.